Very good evening. Happy New Year to you. First programme of 2017. We've got a really good one to kick off the new year with because there's no better subject than those players who've played for both Sheffield football clubs. And I think you'll agree the list is always a lot longer than we first imagined. I spent some time this afternoon jotting down all the ones of my time, uh, the modern day players who played for both the Owls and the Blades, not necessarily in that order. I came to a list of 27. So while you're racking your brains about who's on that list, later in the show, I'll run through it with Lee Bromby, special guest this evening, who's one of those 27 players, and not just one of those 27 players, Lee. Uh, what really caught my eye this week is that you're the only one who's made over 100 starts for both Wednesday and United. Correct? Correct, yeah. I think, well, we're hoping so, because we put that stat out, so... Uh, well, you, we, well, it's we on we're just waiting for someone to contest it. So. It's on your Wikipedia page. Now, if, if anybody wants to contest it, I, th I think it's a moot point. If, you, if, you, if it was a 100 appearances, I think your old mate, Derek Geary, who followed a similar path yes. to you from, yeah. when, from Hillsborough to Bramall Lane, yeah. might contest it. Because in terms of appearances, he's around that mark too. Yeah, I think Derek will be very close. Um, obviously, playing with him, I know he is close to my appearances, but I think we're saying starts, aren't we? We've got officially starts. We're officially saying starts. We're on yeah. safe ground with, with starts. I'm really amazed that you've not heard from Dell. Yeah, definitely. About yeah. this. <laughs> you know. No, he's one of my good friends, and uh, you know, I grew up with him uh, at Sheffield Wednesday. So, uh, you know, fantastic player, and he's doing really well now at Sheffield United. He's the under 18s coach, so uh, he's he's doing well in that career as well. Similarities between the two of you, then, because yep. effectively, you're under 18s coach at Huddersfield Town, aren't you? Yep. Uh, yeah, no, uh, both taken the same route. Uh, we both retired quite young uh, from football and we've, you know, we've both gone into the, uh, the coaching side, which, uh, you know, we talk regular probably every day. We have a little chat and, you know, bounce ideas off each other, which has been fantastic. Um, you know, and it, it's great to see Derek at, at a club that he played for and he's got a lot of passion for the club. Um, you know, it's, and it's great to see him doing well within the academy. And of course, he uh, went to United, Neil Warnock swooped in yep. after y yourself, Derek Geary, Alan Quinn. I think we're all released around the same time by the Owls. And yes. Neil Warnock came in and got all three of you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a funny time because uh, we all, all three of us grew up at Sheffield Wednesday, came yeah. through the youth system there, um, you know, and, and managed to play in the first team and, and do quite well for the first team. So it was a, it was a funny time that we all left, you know, at the same time. Uh, Derek actually went um, to Stockport first. So yes, me, he did. Me, yeah, me yeah. and Alan, me and Alan both signed for uh, Sheffield United on the same day. Yeah. Uh, and then Derek came, I think, a couple of months later, and, and he did very well, you know, for both clubs yeah. as well. Uh, but like I said, it, won it, it was a tough decision uh, for all of us really to to make that move. But it was perhaps less emotive for him in that, as you correctly say, you know, he had that bridge and I'd momentarily forgotten of Stockport in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Whereas there wasn't that bridge for, for, for yourself. Yeah. So in the eyes of the fans, you were, you were turning, turning on the owls to get join the blaze. But actually it was a career decision. Yeah, 100%. I mean, at the time, Sheffield, Sheffield Wednesday had gone through, uh, you know, the transition of being relegated from the, the Premiership, then we, we went down to League One. Yeah. Uh, numerous managers uh, came in and I think they made a decision to say, right, let's have a clean slate. Um, whether that was the right or wrong decision from them, um, I don't think any of us wanted to leave Sheffield Wednesday at the time. Yeah. Um, you know, we had a, a great time there and, you know, enjoyed breaking into the first team and um, it was disappointing to leave, but like you said, sometimes you've got to make the right decision for yourself. And at the, mm. that, that time, going and working under someone like Neil Warnock was a great opportunity for myself um, and for the other two guys as well. And, mm. and it proved to be the right decision in the end. Indeed, a wrong decision to keep the mobile phones. For sure. <laughs> My only excuse is it's a new one and I can't you seem to, to find the button to switch it off. <laughs> so it's got in my pocket, it keeps blipping. Um, I think I can safely say from my neutral corner that Sheffield Wednesday made a colossal mistake and Neil Warnock made a very good judgment to, to bring, bring you lot in, as was evidenced by your promotion uh, eventually to, yeah. to the Premier League under Neil, yeah. uh, your season there. We're going to talk more about those, yeah. those days, um, but we're going to come right up to date 
uh, if we may. And yeah. Dom Housen of the Sheffield Star, by the way, will join us in part two with plenty of insight uh, on the Owls and, and how they're playing at the moment. How do you see it from the distance of Huddersfield, your two old clubs? We'll take the Owls first of all. Um, yeah, I think they've, they've done excellent last season. Um, and the expectations of that club are massive. So I think going into this season, I think the fans will have expected a little bit more. Um, I think they overachieved a little bit last year. Uh, signed some fantastic players. Um, I saw them play at, at Uddersfield at the beginning of the season. Uh, excellent performance. Uh, Forestieri, outstanding. Scored the winner. Yeah, I know yeah. there's been issues with him and is he staying or is he leaving. Uh, one of my good friends, Tom Lees, has come in and done, uh, done really well now. He was a free transfer, great signing, um, very good player. Um, so Sheffield have got Sheffield Wednesday have got some excellent players. I think, but I think the expectations at that club are, are really high, and I know that from, you know, uh, past from the past and and sort of the expectations the fans put on on the players is massive. Um, I think they'll expect a playoff position definitely again. Well, I think that's different to a year ago. As you said, it's a mirror image. Yeah. They overachieved, and I don't think people actually thought they'd be in the top six. Yeah. This year, as you say, they're expecting it. Yeah, and, and it's, it's not quite. It doesn't look like it. It's, although they are in the top six. Yeah, they are in the top six, and people, are, you know, there's a few grumbles that, that I've heard mm. about about the team and stuff like that, um, but they're still there. Mm. Um, I think this league's really tough this season. Um, I think it's stronger than last season. The teams that have come down uh, are stronger. Uh, some big clubs who will be up there come the end of the season. Yeah. Your Norwiches, I think, will turn it round. Uh, they'll be pushing for a playoff place. So I think I think the league's become stronger this season, um, and th that'll make it tougher for your Sheffield Wednesdays, who, yeah. who have they have invested a lot of money. Uh, some of the players have brought in, you know, being on you know big contracts and, and quite big money to bring them in. Uh, but you need to make that investment in this league if you want to go up. Mm. We'll talk more about the championship in a minute and yeah. Huddersfield Town, yes. who you work for, making yeah. what most of us will consider to be a surprise challenge. Yeah. And it's, it's a challenge that's sticking as well, yeah. again, to a lot of people's surprise. But just turning to Sheffield United for yeah. a minute, I mean, you've seen both the City clubs sort of dip yeah. uh, as well as you've seen them, them rise. Yeah. Uh, many years in League One, far, far too many. Could you have yeah. ever have imagined it would take them six or seven years to have been in this position now? Definitely not. I mean, the times when I was there, the club was on such a fine ground and the chairman's done, done a fantastic job when I was there. Um, it was all set up to be a premiership club. The academy's fantastic. Um, the stadium, the development of the stadium, absolutely fantastic. Um, so probably disappointing that they've been there so long but you've seen Leeds drop down and had a couple of years in there it's mm. a tough league mm. some some good clubs in League One um, and no one's going to give you a promotion you've got to earn the promotion and Sheffield United haven't they haven't been good enough yeah. to get promotion so that's as simple as it is I think this season I'm delighted for them um, you know I think the manager's done really well a Sheffield supporter yeah. a Sheffield from Sheffield it's sort of written in the stars that Hopefully he'll get promotion and back to where they belong. Um, Do you know Chris Wilder? I don't know him. I don't know him. I know of him uh, yeah. just just through him being in Sheffield. I've heard a lot of good things about him uh, from Derek first hand, who said he's excellent. Uh, I know Billy Sharpwell, and he said he's he's, he's an excellent manager. Yeah. Um, and the club seems geared up this season to go to get promotion, yeah. not not through the playoffs to go as champions. Um, yeah. And a, a club like Sheffield United should be back. In the championship minimum, uh, and it'll be a fantastic league next season if you've got you know Leeds, Sheffield United, Sheffield Wednesday, Huddersfield. If if Wednesday and Huddersfield yes. haven't gone well, the other if way. they haven't got up, but it'd be nice to have them Leeds. all pushing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all the Yorkshire clubs now are pushing on the Premiership door. It's uh, about is, time. Yeah. Bradford City are doing quite well. Yes. There's only really Rotherham United, yes. you know, and perhaps understandably, yeah. who are struggling to stay in the Championship. Barnsley are pushing. Barnsley are doing fantastic. Yeah. It's a great scene at yeah, the minute. It's the yeah. best, most healthy scene it's been for a, it is, for, a, yeah. for a long, long time. Yeah. Um, and you talk about Leeds there, and that is yeah. your team. Uh, you, you're Dewsbury born, yeah? Yeah. Uh, so you grew up supporting Leeds. Yeah. Um, who've not had the best of times either in recent years. Yeah. Uh, that must have insulated you to a degree, the fact that you're from West Yorkshire rather than South Yorkshire, when you've played, because this is such a tribal city. Yeah. You played on both. Did that help? Yeah, really? definitely. I think not being from the area definitely helps that I, I was able to play for both clubs. Um, 
like you said, the, the passion in the city is fantastic. And I think in, until you come to the city, you don't realise, um, you know, I'm a Leeds supporter and there's one club in Leeds. And Leeds are yeah. a big club, but in Sheffield, there's two clubs so close to each other. Uh, and I was privileged to play for both. Um, you know, and I, I had a great time at both clubs. But like I said, the passion between them is it's yeah. electric when you're playing those games. And even um, with the distance of supporting Leeds, you must have had a few comments. Yeah, in definitely. Your time. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't live in Sheffield when I played for the clubs. You know, I'm not from too far away, yeah. um, which definitely helps because I could get away from the city. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have any family. All my family are from you know Leeds. Um, so that helped. I didn't have any uh, sort of the emotion yeah. of, you know, moving clubs and stuff. And, and that really helped me whilst I was playing for, for both clubs, really. Yeah. Um, but like you said, I was lucky enough to play for some, some good clubs in Yorkshire. Well, the two Sheffields are, what, three miles apart? Yeah. And yet chalk and cheese, it's somehow in the feel, and the culture, the ethos. Yeah. Uh, how would you describe the differences between them? Uh, uh, from a playing point of view? Did yeah. you feel that difference when you played? I, th I think you feel it straight away, just being part of the club. I mean, Sheffield Wednesday, when I first went there, were, they were in the Premiership. Um, you know, massive club with your Des Walkers, yeah. Kevin Pressmans, you know, internet, uh, Kevin Inchcliffe, I was yeah. left back. Andy Inchcliffe, Andy, yeah. Andy Inchcliffe, all international players. Um, and that, that seemed to be the feel, big club, uh, big tradition, big ground. Um, it's got a different feel of, of mm. supporter there. Um, whereas as soon as I walked into Sheff Sheffield United, it was, uh, it, the only way I can describe it is like a working men's club. Right. It was it was a true family feel club, um, led by someone who, who probably played on that. Neil Warnock loved yeah. the family feel, loved um, you know a close bond between his team. Where did you um, feel most happy? So I, mean, I, get asked, I get asked this yeah. all the time. Uh, you know, you've probably got it wrote down. The most success I had was at Sheffield United. Um, we got promoted to the Premiership. Great times. Probably my best performances there. Um, but loved, loved both clubs for different reasons. I came through uh, a youth system at, at Sheffield Wednesday and, and, you know, to have that first debut for a club, yeah. um, they gave me a chance. Um, so I'll always hold that, you know, close to my heart um, as a career. And, and I look back at the most success and, and what I've achieved at Sheffield United. So two, two different sort of feels for, for both clubs, but very close to, um, and the difference between the two sets of supporters, I mean, some say owls have got the glass half full all the time and blades half empty. Is, is there any kind of truth in that, or I are we reading too much into it? I think it? so, yeah, you're not far. I think uh, both sets of fans are really demanding. Um, yeah. Great, great set of fans. The, the folly are away from home. Um, uh, Sheffield Wednesday fans, I think, you, yeah, probably see the brighter side. I think Sheffield United fans, you'd say, maybe a bit negative. Um, sometimes, I won't say mm. all the time. That, that's just my experience of playing. Mm. Um, I mean, you could get booed off at half time at, sh at, at the lane if, if you're not performing. Uh, so they, they expect performances, not just results. Having um, said that, when you, you were on a hiding to nothing, you and other young players in particular, yeah. when he came in the Wednesday team, in yeah. the wake of some of those star names that you've already mentioned. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a tough time and, and, and the fans expected so much more than what was on the pitch. Um, you know, we, we were fortunate to get into the team, uh, but at that time, the, the, the club was in a transition where the players weren't good enough um, that were coming into the club. Um, so it was tough, I mean, the supporters, Rightly so, mate. You know, they tell you if it's not good enough. But going from, you know, your John Sheridans, Chris Waddles, all the top players they've had there, the Brights, the uh, Des Walkers, all the internationals, to see what did come in, you know, whilst I was sort of playing there. Um, you know, it was hard for the fans to accept. Yeah. And, and I mentioned to you before, it was a good upbringing. Um, yeah. And it was a tough upbringing. But, you know, I love playing always big crowds. I think I made my debut in front of 30,000, which, yeah. you know, Unbelievable. Even when we went into League One, you're getting 25, 30,000. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic club and great support always. Sink or swim. You swam. So did Alan Quinn. So yeah. did Del Geary. Yeah. Uh, and and you, you, you came through that uh, torrid uh, experience. And yeah. then at Bramall Lane, you had great times, great times as well. Where you became a right back, more, uh, as I recall. Uh, you were a centre back at Hillsborough, yeah. weren't you? Yeah. Yeah, you became more of a right back with a long throw. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, th I think that was, uh, you know, as soon as I moved there, Neil Warnock is, is, is that style. You know, I played a lot of right back my first season. Um, every game was right back. Um, then my second season when we got promoted, it was it was a bit of a mix, but mainly mainly central defence. That's where I always wanted to play. But Neil was one of these managers. If you uh, if you wanted to play and you performed, yeah. then he, he give you a chance. You know, and he, he wanted you to play for the team. Uh, me playing right back. I, I don't think I was very good at right back. In my opinion, I was a better central defender. But if you played for the team, um, he always picked you, which you know I always tried to do that, and I sort of kept my place at right back for a full season. Yeah, you're always a strong player there, and so was Michael Brown. Probably yeah. had the best years of his career in a Sheffield yeah. United shirt. Not only marvellous passer of the ball and running midfield, but some yeah. incredible goals. And of course, you're up against him uh, this weekend, or Huddersfield Town yeah, are yeah. in the FA Cup. It's the game I'm doing actually for Sky. Yeah. Uh, Huddersfield v Port Vale, and yeah. um, you'll be there. Yes, I'll see be Michael there. Brown. Yeah, I'll be Caretaker there. Caretaker boss at Port Vale now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I didn't actually play with uh, oh, Michael at, at Sheffield United. I played with him at Leeds. Um, good grief. I thought yeah, I was... so we, we missed each other, but I've become a real good friend with Michael. Yeah. And I think it's a, a great opportunity for him. Uh, it's great to see young English coaches getting a chance. Yeah. Uh, so fair play to the chairman for giving him his chance. And I, I know for a fact um, he'll do well as a manager. Yeah, a memory yeah. plays tricks. So I could have sworn that you. you yeah, were doing yeah, we just there. missed each other, but you know, yeah. since since then I've become really good friends with him. Played with him at Leeds United. Uh, um, yeah. And it, uh, you think he's got the makings he, of, a, a ma of a manager? He, he was. He, he was himself. He, I mean, uh, this is a big shout, but he, he's got that. He's got the mentality. He was sort of born to be a. A manager. Yeah. He's, he's not a coach. Yeah. Um, he'll tell you if he came in here and says he, he isn't a coach, he doesn't want to be out coaching players, he's a manager. Uh, he was like that on the pitch. If you saw him on the pitch, yeah. he was organising off the pitch. He was the man that organised all the players, all the Christmas do's, all the travelling. Right. Um, and it, it's, it's, he's got the qualities, for, for me, I know, I know him well, but I think he's got the qualities to, to be really successful. Uh, in that role, he refereed a few games in his time as well. I seem to recall. Yeah, he might have to. the field. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> so he, uh, he was doing uh, that. I went to watch him against Oldham, and he was straight onto the the fourth official. I thought he's definitely been speaking speaking to Neil Warnock. <laughs> get, get on the fourth official straight away. Yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see how he does. And obviously, the caretakers have always got an opportunity to nail down a, a yeah. manager yeah, yeah. job. Yeah. Um, Talk more after the break about both the Sheffields uh, and Huddersfield and Leeds. Um, let's bring that in. I mean, I don't think yeah. anybody expected this either, that uh, Leeds would be where they are, well yeah. entrenched in the top six, with all the chaos yeah. around the club and the ownership. Yeah, I mean, early on with uh, Gary, I mean, I follow Leeds, Leeds closely and, and still support them now. When Gary first came in, it looked like it might be an early change again because he didn't get the results. Which would have been silly. Yeah, stupid. I mean, yeah. it, He's done really well. I played with Gary. He came to Sheffield Wednesday on loan. I remember that. Time, yeah, a long time ago. And he's, he's a really nice guy. Really, you know, really happy for him that he's doing so well. Uh, Swansea look like they made a mistake now. Yes. It looks it looks silly. Again, another young English manager that's proven, you know, we can actually produce these coaches. And he's doing a fantastic job. I don't know anyone else who, who could have probably done that. Um, Leeds haven't invested heavily. It, the team is young mm. um, and he's doing a fantastic job without really signing too many no. big names um, and I've watched them, they're really organised, playing some really good stuff and you know I hope they're pushing for sort of uh, playoffs as well. It'd be, be a nice uh, three in the playoffs if it was Sheffield Wednesday, Huddersfield and Leeds. It certainly would. Be, it would be keep, interesting. Keep me a bit busy and it would keep our guest after the break, Don Housen, busy as yeah. well. Um, Leeds United, I think He's got a big club temperament, Gary Monk, the way he's yeah. handled it so very calmly yeah. in those yeah. opening weeks when yeah. all the rumours were that he was on the brink of the sack. And the way he's yeah. pulled it around there, yeah, deserving a yeah. tremendous credit, really. Yeah. Um, after the break, we'll talk more about Huddersfield and the very interesting methods of David Wagner, yeah. very successful methods in charge, used yeah. to work with Jurgen Klopp and has brought some of those methods, how that applies to your job at Huddersfield. And we'll talk more about the Owls and the Blades, um, in particular, a certain fixture coming up in just over a week, Sheffield Wednesday versus Huddersfield Town and the list of 27 who've played for both. Join us in about five minutes for all of that. See you then. <laughs> 